on a commercial call here. Air conditioner wasn't working right. This weekend they found it in the wrong mode. Turned it on, it ran, and now it's not working again. Looking in there, it looks like we've got frozen evaporator. Coil, we can't tell quite yet, so let's check the obvious stuff and see how our filters and fan and stuff like that is. We took off this armor plate here. And the filter looks a little bit bad. If we can get it out of there. That thing is... Oh, it's stuck to the uh, coil. That's, that coil is pretty jacked to the max. Well, I can feel the fan running. That was one of the things I wanted to check first. I would say when you have ice on the outside of the unit, it's probably not a good thing. Definitely not a good sign. This thing was brand new in 1998. Not sure gonna be able to get a whole lot of water up here very easily, but that would be the fastest and easiest way. We have to pop this top off of it, see what we can do here. So that's not looking good. We're just slightly iced over here a little bit. That uh, makes a nice ice machine. Your fan blades here are just touch dirty. Yeah, she's uh Feels like the bearings feel good though. She gets a nice smooth turn left and right. So it's gonna take a little more than just a little bit of heat. That's been going on for a little while there. Yep. Well, gonna have to get their maintenance department and see if they want me to melt it out or if they want to just let it go and come back later or what they want to do because that's not gonna come off with just a little bit of heat from a torch. So we had a rope bar hose up to there and I've got another hose over there that I was able to get from inside. It's not hot water, but it'll at least get us over to there where we can melt that ice. Some's better than none, and it'll also allow us to wash out the coils that I guarantee you probably are dirty. And it almost reached, so, oh well. Got 75 extra feet here just in case, you know. Probably would be a bad idea to put a trap on that. Might help it a little bit. Yeah, this is probably gonna make a mess. I don't know where those holes came from. So what I ended up doing was there was some holes along the bottom. I taped those up, built me a little ramp, which ain't working for crap. And this ain't this ain't going very well. So one thing as I went ahead and decided, I'm just gonna go ahead and wash this coil out and then we'll just come back. And then I noticed the reversing valve. So we're gonna force it to heat that coil up. That should speed it up. I'm gonna do that after I get in washing this condenser out, which no matter what, we kind of, are in, in the good here because you can see how bad that uh, nasty crap is coming out of this coil. So it, uh, we're gonna get, make good use of this hose being up here because you can tell this doesn't uh, happen very often. That's that's some nice chocolate milk right there. I'm trying out my new soaker hose here too. Kind of see how well this works out. I'm using this for special occasions where you know you want that fine mist. So see how it goes. It's not the real long wand that usually is a pain in the butt to get into places. So we'll try this out, see how it goes, and get this thing cleaned up, and then we'll see if we can get this thing running in uh, reverse mode there and melt that ice off. Hopefully we can pull that blower out too. That's a total wreck. So we've got it running in heat mode. I can feel the heat. You can see some of it starting to melt. It's going to be a while for that right there. I've got... The coil washed out a lot better than what it was, and it's not washed, it's washed, it's washed out. So we're gonna watch it for a little bit and see. Hopefully we can maybe get this stupid filter out of here, which is I think a good majority of our problem. But I mean, it's still froze in there, literally. So it's just a waiting game now. A lot of waste of time, but we really don't need to be coming back. So we went ahead and dug some ice out and it melted it out pretty decent. We're uh, got a small little piece back here, we gotta get out yet. But we got most of the crap out. We're still gonna have to pop this top because there's so much garbage inside there and there's probably a lot of ice on the back side yet. It's just one of them freaking messes. You can see the crud. Yeah, it still hasn't let go there yet. That just packed right inside there pretty good. 
been enjoying these new gloves they got gave us. They uh, we had some similar. They're kind of rubberized on one side. They're stretchy and they seem to be kind of cut resistant to a point. Filters plugged solid. Coil still got uh, still the coil still has ice, so we're getting that out of there. Let's see if we can't get that blower out of there. Work it out while we got everything apart. It's just a a wreck. But we'll see what we can do with this. If we can get her back out and going here. Okay, so this crap here is the stuff that's floating around. This is like a plastic factory. So I'm digging this out of the uh, coil. It's uh, deep up in here. So I'm getting up in these cracks and crevices here and dragging it towards the front because water just will wash it deeper into the coil. So we're kind of just dragging it forward, getting into, oh boy, I can feel it there. Yeah, you can just bring that forward. Yeah, more gunk. So we're washing it and getting that crud out of there and then we're rinsing all this out too. I ended up just kind of smacking it with the back side of my wrench, had to be careful, otherwise you can puncture a coil. You know, it's one of them things where it's, uh, we got a lot of work to do and we ain't got a lot of time to do it and not a lot of people to do it. So making mobile trips back an hour, one delay, it's just a lot of wasted time. So unfortunately it's just quicker in the wrong, long run here to just sit here and work at it and get her out of there as best as possible. See if I can get you a shot there with the light on because this freaking sunshine out here is actually pretty bad. So I combine that with a nasty filter and that's what you got. So that and a dirty fan blade. So airflow, big issue. Wouldn't be surprised. It might be a little low, hard to say. I haven't got to that point yet, so we're still digging. Lots of digging. I was able to yank the blower motor out sideways. Gonna rinse this all out. I'm gonna do as little unhooking as possible. I've washed with motors in there forever. I don't recommend using a cleaner in there. Work your way slow, sheet from the bottom down. Just don't let it spin, because if you do, it'll get in the motor. You do it however you want. If you want to take all the time to yank it out and all that, you do what you want to do. If you're a rookie, tear it all apart, spend an extra 15 minutes, 20 minutes on it, and putting away, uh, taking it apart, putting it back together. That way you don't ruin anything, but I, uh, that's not how I do it. I try to speed it up however I can. Man, that is some nasty crap. Jeez. So we're just washing it, washing it, washing it. See the water's coming right off the front here. Hopefully it's focusing, can't see nothing too bright. But it's getting a lot of it out of there. You can see it's, it's letting loose. But you don't want it to spin. If you do, it's gonna loop around and fall down on the motor. You'll get a little splash on the motor. It's not gonna hurt anything. We're getting it out of there. At least we're doing it. So we've got it cleaned out. Coils look a lot better than what it did. That is a wonderful trip hazard they got there. Coils look much, much better than what they did. Uh, got the condenser coil much better than it was. Lower wheel actually can somewhat breathe now. Retape my nuts here that were half ass taped. Uh, See, I hate people that don't know how to strip a wire. They make it nice and short and don't get caught in a wire nut. Don't be one of those people. Make the thing long enough that it actually fits in the nut. So we're gonna restrip that. Give it something to tie on to. I gotta admit, I really like this head. It swivels 180 back and forth, variable, and multiple different spray patterns. You can see the crap. It, they must have a pan underneath this thing or something. I ain't never seen that before. But I've got down in between here since we have the top off now because I couldn't get through the front. They siliconed all the front here. It uh, got all down in that coil. Big time better than what it was. I can see light through the coil like it ain't nothing. Through over here, there you go. See left to right, there you go. So didn't even have to use the uh, chemical on it because it's really one pass thick one and a half passes if you may be lucky pretty thin coil only nice thing about the 10 sear units they're 
fin. And uh, so we're gonna get this thing back together, get the trap on it, and uh, get the charge checked, and we'll see if they got a filter for it, because I don't carry any on my truck. But otherwise, we're looking pretty good in the hood. I got checking the pressures, and they're a little low. We're about 60 degrees, 61 degrees out here, and we're running about a 25 degree uh, evap and about an 80 degree condenser. So we're about 20 over ambient. This one has a tendency to run 25 to 30 ish area. Either way, we're low. We got a fan cycle switch we're going to put on here, but since this is a heat pump, we've got to put a relay on it to bypass the fan control when it's in heating mode. Otherwise, the fan's not going to run and you're going to have issues. So we're going to wire up a relay off of the B terminal because these guys use the B terminal. So we'll just have to power it so that it bypasses it. So the nice thing is we've got a straighter port down here on the high side. We're going to tap into that, drill a hole through that firewall there. I just now noticed that is trapped external or internally. That's great. After I just put that trap on it. Great. Super duper. So that was a waste. So I got that on there. We'll have to take that off. The double trap will be an issue. Whatever. Good thing we caught it. Otherwise it wouldn't have drained for crap. Double trap don't work right. So we don't make another mistake like I did on the trap. Got looking here. They have a low ambient relay is what I'm assuming it stands for. Uh, OPT optional. So they are actually breaking the black wire there and then it's powered based off the black wire there. Uh, off of brown. It says down here the uh, that's awesome. Ugh. You gotta love the wind. Wind is awesome. Lots of wind. So, optional three. Or, just waiting for that to come and knock my skull off next. Uh, it says and see note. Where the heck's it at? I seen the note thing somewhere in here. Note, note three. So, down here, if low ambient control is not used, connect black wire from the outdoor fan motor to wire nut from DR, which I love all these abbreviations. DR, you would have defrost relay. So chances are it probably does not have that. However, I've seen a couple different relays in here. <sighs> Looks like a fan relay here. That's what I'm assuming is. There's a green wire. Looks like that goes down to there. So this is your blower. And I was pretty sure this right here is all defrost control, so it does not have one for that. So we're going to intercept that fan up in here. So we'll get that here in a second. Found it. Here's where they have the black common wire coming up to the defrost relay, which they're using that relay to break it when they go into a defrost. So we're just going to go and intercept it right here with this one and we will power it shut when it's in heating mode. We'll be good to go, it'll be normally open otherwise based off of, it'll be basically across the contacts of this here. It'll be normally open letting that do the closing and when it's powered, when it's running in heat mode, it'll power the shut, jumping that and bypassing it. Simple. So we got that in place there, went ahead and got that wire tied up because that wire was dangling there on that 3 8 line out of that filter dryer. Go ahead and sleeve that copper line going through there and finish mounting things up. Here's what we got so far. So we got the control mounted here, curly curled up, going through the hole. Got to get the uh, sleeve on that yet. I've got the fan wire coming in and going out, and I have it in parallel with a red set of wires, which all this stuff here is rounded edges, so that's why there's no Romex connectors. Comes up to the normally open contacts here. I have B going to one side of my coil, the other side of common going to the common terminal strip here, and that's about it. I went ahead and checked the schematic to find out which one was uh, B, which was black, which turned into gray, and up it goes to there. You can kind of follow it from here, which was all in the uh, schematic, which was right up here. Pretty brain dead and simple, which worked out good. B goes doo -doo -doo -doo, up to there it goes. and. Uh, now it's just a matter of getting it turned on and we're going to get the uh, charge set and then uh, we'll set the uh, fan cycle first or after we get the charge set. I ended up cutting that trap off. That's going to at least get it away so it ain't draining down the face of it like it was doing. Whether or not that makes a big difference or not, I'm not really sure, but at least it's on there. Make some use of the PVC plastic. 
So we got it finally tuned in, tested, and it's running. It's cycling the fan on and off. Pressures look pretty good. Added a little bit to it. I gotta wait, reweigh my bottle. Last thing I wanna do is bring a weight scale up here with all the other crap. So it's gonna wrap this one up. Gotta get my caps on there. If you guys like it, you know what to do. Until next time, guys, catch you on the next one.